Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in today's video I'm going to be restoring an iPhone 4S that I've had for a very long time. This iPhone 4S I got in a massive part slot about a year and a half ago for $80. In that part slot was an iPhone 4S logic board with a missing battery connector. Now in a previous video I attempted to fix this iPhone 4S by soldering on a new battery connector. If you have seen that video you'll know that the repair was unsuccessful and I wasn't able to get the battery connector soldered on properly and you can see my horrendous job of uh, the first attempt at putting a new battery connector on this 4S. It's wobbly, the solder joints are really bad. So in today's video, I'm gonna be fixing that. So without further ado, I'm going to need a hot air station. This is one I've had for quite some time now, and I'm setting it in between 200 to 230 degrees. Obviously this is gonna vary um, depending on what unit you have and things like that. But in the practicing I've been doing, I found this temperature to work best. Now I started with a heap of test boards, these are all iCloud locked, dead, water damaged, basically irreparable, and I started uh, desoldering different components off of the board. You can see here this SE is actually snapped in two pieces, um, but I can basically practice on these boards until I became confident um, that I could actually fix a phone that I had laying around. I took various components off such as SIM trays, battery connectors, and um, just regular connectors for the screen and things like that. After I felt confident, I jumped out and got a iPhone 4S logic board. This one doesn't work um, and I was desoldering a few components on it and I began by removing the battery connector which I will transfer across to the 4S with the missing battery connector. Now I did test to make sure after I removed the battery connector that it still uh, was able to connect to a battery because when I tried to solder on a new battery connector uh, in a previous video I melted the connector and it would no longer clip in the battery. So after I could confirm that it was still functioning as it should, I began to desolder the old battery connector that I tried to attempt to install on this 4S. Now in my first attempt I used a soldering iron which isn't a good idea, but in this video I will be doing the repair with a hot air station which works much better and um, obviously I'm new at this so it's not going to be perfect, but as long as I can get the phone functioning, that is all I'm looking for in this video. So with some new solder paste applied to the pads of the connections where the battery actually connects and solders onto, this stuff is basically just a paste form of solder and once you heat it up, it melts just like regular solder. It's really, really cool. Then I could get the new battery connector for, that I salvaged off another iPhone 4S and hold it in place with some tweezers and heating up that solder with that hot air rework station, we can solder in the new battery connector. Looking at the connection, I can see that I probably added a bit too much solder, but as long as it works, I'm not too concerned in that regard. So connecting up a test screen and dock connector, I can then prep the iPhone for its first boot, hopefully with a working battery. So I'll need to obviously connect a battery to the phone and plugging in the charger, we see the battery flat symbol and that means the battery is obviously detected and after a bit of a charge, the iPhone powered up. If I go into settings, you'll notice that it does have an iCloud account, although everything seems to be turned off, which indicates that the previous owner didn't even know the iCloud password anyway, which is never a good sign. Going into the stocks app though, you can see that this phone was last connected to the internet on the 2nd of December 2014. Now luckily enough, I actually contacted the original iCloud owner through the contacts app and through Facebook Messenger. I got in contact with them and they replied quite quickly and actually wiped the device using iCloud.com and removed it from their account, which means I was able to erase all the previous content and data from the phone and have it removed from their account. So with the erase completed, you can see that this is a 16 gigabyte model on iOS 7.1.1. So now that we know the logic board of the phone works, I gave the battery connector that I just soldered on a quick clean with some cleaning alcohol to remove any flux or solder residue left on the board. Next, it was time to restore this iPhone logic board back into a housing and screen and all of its components to bring it back into a fully functioning phone. So I grabbed this iPhone 4S frame from my parts bin. The screen on it actually isn't functioning. It has black blobs all over the screen. 
screen. So I'll need to swap that across with a new screen for an iPhone 4S, as well as change the power button because that is not clicking at the current point. With the iPhone 4 and 4S models, you need to loosen the three screws on each side of the screen assembly, and then there's one in each corner. The screen will then come off of the phone, and it's time to prep a new screen with a new home button and home button gasket, and making sure that's straight. Then basically you can peel off the protective film and that screen is ready to go. Now while I had the screen off, I thought this was an excellent time to remove that power button assembly. So removing the earpiece and the two screws holding in the power button bracket, I can remove it from the phone. I then had to transfer across the earpiece to the new assembly, which I actually had one of these laying around in my parts bin, which was great. And I could install the new power button, making sure it's clicking correctly, and install the rest of the cable assembly, such as the earpiece and proximity sensor, which were a little bit hard to align. Next, I can install the new screen back onto the iPhone 4S, making sure that it's pressed down correctly and there are no gaps. I also took the opportunity to get more cleaning alcohol inside of the phone and cleaned up the metal mid-frame which contained a heap of fingerprints given that this was a test housing for many phones. Next I could reinstall the screws for the screen which will complete the screen installation for this iPhone 4S frame. It's now time to put in the iPhone 4S logic board that we just repaired, making sure to remove that screw for the grounding clip up top before I screw everything back down. I did put the SIM tray in it which kept the board in place whilst I connected all of the connectors. Next we can move down to the bottom of the phone where I can install the speaker assembly. And I'll need to install some new screws into the phone itself because of course this was just a bare bones logic board so it had no screws or any other components. And as you can see, our iPhone 4S is starting to take shape. So throwing in a battery and turning it on, you can see that it's running off of its own power and is back looking like a regular iPhone 4S. This is also a good time to test out all the functions like the power button, home button, and volume controls. With those all tested and successfully working, I can install the final few pieces which will complete this iPhone 4S making sure to give the inside of a phone a quick wipe down before I seal everything up. Installing a new back glass panel and installing two pentalobe screws, this iPhone 4S is looking like a phone once again. I can install a tempered glass screen protector on the front and we're done. So this is it, an iPhone 4S that I brought back from the dead given its broken battery connector. With a small board level repair and some parts I had laying around, I was able to revive this disregarded iPhone. Even given the age of the iPhone 4S, it cost me nothing to repair it and was great practice to gain skill in board level repairs. And it's also great to know that I saved this iPhone from landfill. I also hope to further increase my micro soldering skills so I can bring you guys more board level repair videos in the future. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.